Hi, I'm Matt Barm and welcome to my Inno 3D iChill GTX 1080 X4 temperature and sound level test update video. One of my viewers has requested this update, so here it is. Testing conditions are as follows. For the sound test, I have a calibrated decibel meter inside my tower case to measure idle and max load sound levels. For the temperature test, I have my case fully enclosed with the side panels fixed. All internal cooling is functioning well and there is plenty of airflow around the case. The ambient temperature of the room I'm testing in is actually a very hot 30 degrees centigrade because my partner comes from a very hot country and she keeps our house very warm indeed. Not ideal for this type of test but it will prove the cooling capability of the iChill card very well. Okay, so at idle you can see on the right here that the card itself is sitting at 51 degrees, well it keeps teetering between 50 and 51 degrees centigrade and the fan speed sitting at about 41% and that's 636 RPM, 637 now. Um, so it's, it's around about 50 degrees at idle and I did notice this before and I do, as I said, sit in a very hot room at 30 degrees. So it does perform okay at idle. So now what I'm gonna do is fire up the Fermark GPU stress test and bring the card up to 100% or as near to 100% as possible and see what the temperature reads after that and do the sound test also when it's at 100% max. Um, I've already done the idle sound test and I will put that in the graphs at the end of this video to discuss. Okay, I'm running the Fermark test in windowed mode at 1920 by 1080 with eight times anti-aliasing. So let's see how it performs. So the uh, testing has been running for about 23 minutes now, 22, 23 minutes now, and the temperature is stable at between, well, 67 to 69 degrees centigrade. The, the max was 69, and then it's fluctuating between 67 to 69. The fan speeds up to 86, and it's just holding. So that's a very, very impressive temperature. The, the actual sound levels are even more impressive, but um, I'll leave that to the, the end of this video when we look at the graphs. I'm very surprised, in fact, that the, the sound is as low as, as it is. I mean, there's four fans on that card, so for the sound to be as low as it is, that's a decent piece of engineering, <laughs> I really must say. And I sound like I'm a bit of an Inno 3D fanboy here, but I am surprised. You can even see the GPU temperature there dropping to 66 now. Okay, I don't think, <laughs> yeah, I don't think if we leave this running any longer, it's going to prove anything else other than uh, the GPU temperature is actually cooling down, which is very strange. Remember, the ambient temperature of this room is 30 degrees, so it is not a cold room. Um, that's surprisingly shocking, actually. And it does signify <laughs> that, well, you can see there, I was just watching the GPU load. It's 99%. It goes up to 100, but it sits at 99 most of the time. But it actually signifies that I've got some room for overclock here. And uh, I think that's what I'm going to do. So with this still running, I'm going to pump up the uh, clocks to see what happens then. Okay, so the tests are now complete, uh, and I even threw in the overclock test as well, which uh, brought back some surprising results. Um, first of all, let's start with the um, idle test, and to remind you, the ambient room temperature in the test room is 30 degrees centigrade. Okay, so on the Inno 3D iChill GTX 1080 X4 idle tests, uh, just to remind you that the Standard clock on idle is 1,759 megahertz on GPU clock and 2,600.1 megahertz on the memory clock. So the max sound level that we found was 36 decibels. The max temperature was 50. Uh, these are average. It did fluctuate very, very slightly, um, but the actual max decibel didn't go any higher than the max temperature averaged at 50. Uh, okay, so the next test was the uh, load test, so between 99 to 100% load on standard boost clock, which is 1898 megahertz GPU boost clock, 
and the max sound level for that was 40 so not such a great increase I believe the fans were spinning at about 86 percent the max temperature averaged at 67 degrees centigrade so not a huge amount in fact I was incredibly surprised at that and that led me on to the next test the overclock test I was actually expecting the max temperature to be high 70s I mean that's what I saw in the uh, reviews well saying that was the X3 review where the max temperature actually was 76 I believe it was degrees centigrade but then of course that hasn't got the same fan implementation it's only got three fans across the top and not the side fans so does the side fan really give that much more cooling to drop it nearly 10 degrees be interesting to find out but I haven't got one of those cards so I can't but uh, maybe someone else will do similar tests but then I have got a very very good case it is an airflow case it is basically just a cage with size I mean it's all panels and everything and it's all enclosed but um, it is built for airflow and um, well you can see what a good job it does in this 30 degree room okay so the final test after seeing the the boost clock tests um, well the load tests was to overclock and then see what the sound level and the max temperature was. So I managed to get an overclock, which I might even be able to squeeze more out of the car, but the overclock I got was uh, 2075.5 megahertz on the GPU boost, and uh, I got the memory up to 2629.1. So a modest increase on the memory. The memory, just to remind you that this car comes factory overclocked anyway, um, and the memory is already overclocked, so I think uh, about 30 megahertz on top of the um, 2600 is quite a good increase on the memory um, and well well over the 2000 megahertz on the GPU boost clock was superb absolutely superb um, without boost the actual clock speeds when they're overclocked on that are 1859 so under boost it shoots up to 2075.5 okay so under boost, we had the max sound level of 41 and the max temperature of 70. So that's 41 decibels and 70 degrees centigrade. That was the max temperature. I actually sat at 69 most of the time. The uh, fans sped up one more percent, up to 87 percent for the fans. But that was it. Um, and I left it running for about half an hour. I mean, any good burning would need like an overnight burning. You'd need to leave these tests running overnight and then look at the results. But um, I haven't got the time to do that. I, I left the test running long enough until they leveled out. And that was very consistent in, in what I did for the test. So they're fine. I very much doubt that temperature would have increased any more. In fact, on the standard boost clock test, we even saw the temperature gradually going back down over time. It did go up to 68 and actually gradually went back down, which was quite surprising, actually. Um, so yeah, what a fantastic result, what a fantastic card. I expect I can overclock the card even more, which really does surprise me considering it's factory overclocked anyway. But the fact that the, the max temperature is quite low, I mean anything under 80 is superb. Um, it means there's even more overclocking room, so I can probably increase the voltage and uh, the power and get even more bang for my buck. Considering the cards are quite expensive, that's uh, quite important. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed these extra tests that I've put together for you and uh, I hope if you're thinking about buying one of these Inno 3D cards that this sways you in the right direction because they are one of the cheapest variants at the moment um, but they're very well made, superb performance, great to great sounding I was going to say but they're not loud and they're not hot. I don't know what else you could want really from a top range graphics card. Absolutely superb. Thank you.